Hello, everyone. My name is Kaiming Chen um, from University of Washington. Today, it's my pleasure to present with you our work exploring user reactions and mental models towards perceptual manipulation attacks in mixed reality. This work is a collaboration with Jeffrey Tian and my advisors, Tadayoshi Kono and Francisca Rosner. The concept of mixed reality can trace back to the 1960s. Over the past few years, we've seen great improvements in the MR device, ranging from glass-like frame device, such as HoloLens or Microsoft, spectacles from Snapchat, to pass-through-enabled headsets, like Quest Pro from Meta and Vision Pro from Apple. Uh, some people refer to similar technologies as augmented reality or extended reality. For the rest of the talk, I'll be using the term MR to refer to technologies that place virtual content in a user's perception of the real-world environment. Comparing with traditional technology, mixed reality has the capability to alter users' perception in a much more immersive way. Researchers are able to create virtual sound that are perceptually indistinguishable from the real world sound, generate realistic haptic feedback, overlay virtual content to manipulate users' sense of taste, and add in subtle visual changes to manipulate users' walking path without even them noticing. As a security researcher, we asked, what happened if we create this manipulation with ill intention? In this paper, we conceptualize perceptual manipulation attacks. That is, to manipulate user through out of a zero virtual content with a clear attack goal. To influence user's decision-making process to induce incorrect perception, cognition, and resulting action. PMA is not only a theoretical threat. Recent reports have documented participants perceiving negative physiological impacts and even physical injuries while interacting with MR technologies. So while PMA in MR is technically possible, what is not known is user reaction, their mental models when undergoing such attack. This understanding will help us form the future of risk assessment and uh, build next generation of MR defense. In this paper, we ask two research questions. First, what physical and behavioral reactions and responses do users have when experiencing PMA in MR? Second, what are user-reported reflections, reactions, and defensive strategies to PMA during or shortly after they occur? To evaluate the effectiveness of PMA on user, we need measurable benchmarks such that it allows us to compare user performance under the attack setting and the normal setting. We want this attack to be safe controllable, measurable, and repeatable. Given these criteria, we mounted micro benchmarks on the computer monitor and present PMA in a mixed reality headsets. We, we conduct an in-lab study where we evaluate the effectiveness of PMA and later run an interview study to understand user reaction while undergoing such attack. We did not inform participants that the study is about security in hope of avoiding biased reactions. We built our experimental harness using our test bed and an Oculus Quest 2 and a Zip mini camera to create a colorful MR experience. Later, we carefully screened and recruited 21 participants for this study, and our study has, uh, was approved by the University of Washington Ethic Review Board. So here is a demonstration of our hardware. We basically take a Zip mini camera right uh, on the Quest 2 to create this MR experience. Next, we need to select what human perception to attack. Given the exploratory nature of our work, we select these three uh, perceptions, visual, auditorial, and spatial awareness, and we select corresponding metrics based on existing cognitive science literature. Our first experiment measures user's reaction time. Users are asked to wait while a red box appears and click as soon as the green box shows. An incorrect reaction would be click before the green box appears. The goal for a visual PMA here are twofold. First is to induce an incorrect reaction, and second is to delay a correct reaction significantly. We create four visual PMAs for these two goals. To evaluate the effectiveness of visual PMA, we use two metrics. First is the invalid click rate. We found that 70% of the participants failed during attack one, and 30% failed on attack two, while none of the user performed an invalid during the benchmark setting. 
The second metric is the delayed click rate, and we found roughly 75% of the participants all took a significantly longer time to react. So right now, we focus on user reaction uh, while under the PMA. And to our surprise, we found what we refer to as secondary impact, meaning users took a significantly longer time to react even when no attack appears after they experienced the PMA. Our second experiment measures user sustained attention. Uh, the goal is to create an auditorial PMA to distract user on a specific level. The attack is effective. A lot of participants failed during the auditorial attack, and many attribute this PMA to a sound from the real world. Our third experiment measures situation awareness. That is the ability to, knowing, to, to know what's going on around you. We first present a decoy task asking users to count the number of virtual red cards while presenting an important real-world message. And that is, if you see this message, raise your hand immediately. The goal for a successful PMA here is to delay user from noticing this real-world message. And this attack is also very successful, with only 8 out of 21 participants react before phase 5, which is the, the decoy content fully disappears. Now let's turn to the user reported uh, reflections. Here I present a few representative response. Feel free to check our paper for further information. First, while our PMA are only prototypes, we were surprised to found that many participants on their first impression were unable to distinguish this uh, PMA being a virtual content. For example, participants refer to the auditory PMA as sound from the real world. We found participants develop a variety of defensive strategies. While some strategies succeed, we found that while a tactical changes, the participants found themselves newly impacted as their previous strategies backfired. Before the debriefing session, we asked participants about their attribution to this uh, virtual content. Many participants attribute this to glitches. Some even refer back to their previous experience in MR. The fact that glitches are commonly experienced in mixed reality opens an opportunity for the attackers to hide under this assumption. A lot of participants also assume that the content is here to supposed to help them. And such an assumption also opens an opportunity for the attackers to hide under this cover. So to summary, here is the key lesson of our study. First, we found that user can be manipulated by PMAs in MR. Second, in addition to direct impacts from attacks, we documented secondary impacts on subsequent tasks. Third, we found that participants develop a variety of hypotheses to explain this adversarial mixed reality content, and, we, and such expectation could be leveraged by real attackers. Finally, we found that while some participants successfully adapted to the attack, these adaptive strategies backfire when the attack goal changes. The defense for mixed reality system will be an even more important topic in the next few years as AR, MR, VR, all these technologies continues to evolve. We argue that it is important for the MR system developers and the application designers to take into account of this adversarial content. Based on our study, we provide a list of suggestions. First is to add attribution to the MR content such that the user can distinguish if the content is generated by a trusted source or a potential malicious source. Second, adding support to a contextual focus mode so that when users is on high cognitive load, minimize the displayed information to avoid a uh, distract user. Third, we hope to explore human-centric defenses. With the sensors embedded on the AR, MR, VR headsets, we hope to using eye tracking sensor and hand tracking sensor to detect if users are experiencing unwanted content and help them to remove it. And finally, if all of these defenses fails, we should provide an uh, analogy similar to the control out delete feature such that user can safely get back to reality. In conclusion, our work is the first study to experimentally understand users' perception, reaction, and mental models when undergoing PMA in mixed reality. 
We open source our experimental infrastructure to facilitate open science, and we shared our findings with industry to help build the next generation of MR defenses. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions.